Every time you encounter God, God changes your story. One encounter with Jesus can turn somebody's story around. You have come to seek no other person, but Jesus said, come unto me, O you that live on heaven, and I'll give you rest. I decree you enter into your rest. Amen. Because you have come seeking Jesus, your rest is guaranteed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Somebody with a heart problem is healed. Amen. Somebody with a severe heart problem, you are healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Praise for supernatural increase slash anointing. That's the message. Praise for supernatural increase slash anointing. Every time we say we are praising God, we are talking about the greatness of God in songs, dancing, and clapping. When you talk about the supernatural, you're talking about something above the natural, beyond the natural. Increase is something that becomes greater in size, amount, or degree. So praise for supernatural increase is simply exalting God for who he is in songs, dancing, and clapping. So that it can increase you financially. But here you can hear me very well. In the kingdom of God, the person of Jesus is different from the principles of Jesus. Many mistake the two. They know the person of Jesus, but they don't apply the principles of Jesus. His person guarantees your heaven. His principles guarantees your success. Many have accepted his person, but they've not applied his principles. So they are making heaven, but they are failures on the earth. The two must go together. When you accept his person, which guarantees your heaven, you should also apply his principles that will guarantee your success. Is that clear, sir? But the principles, they don't jump on you. You acquire them through knowledge. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So if you don't know the truth, you can't be free. Your freedom is not what you wish. Freedom is what you search for. You settle with the word of God to acquire freedom. Jesus speaking said in Matthew 16, 19, He said, I give unto you the keys, plural. Of the kingdom of God, heaven. So there are keys that are placed in the kingdom. With those keys, you gain access to your inheritance in Christ. The key for healing is not the key for prosperity. The key for prosperity is not the key for deliverance. Each one has its own key. Is that clear, sir? I can sing, I can quote the scriptures, you get healed. I cannot sing and quote scriptures for you to come out of poverty. They are not the same. Are you getting this? But many take prayer as the only key for everything. They pray for prosperity. They pray for healing. They pray for everything. You don't pray to prosper. You apply principles to prosper. So we're looking at vital keys that guarantee our access to supernatural increase. Vital keys that guarantee our access to supernatural increase. I'll just take two in this service. If you must prosper, I said, you have to hear God's word. You have to do what? Hear God's word and practice the word of God. I went for that to say, you must be a covenant practitioner. Number two. Another one, one of the pastors said, walk in financial integrity. Today, integrity is missing. Without integrity, there will be no dignity. Many people are so crooked in their Christian adventure, they do everything anyhow. You can't fight for them. You can't trust them. When it comes to money, there's something else. You can't prosper that way. You must have financial worth, integrity. Now, when you are doing business with people, you don't cheat them. You don't sell fake for original. Prosperity is not just, oh, give money, give money alone. You have to walk in integrity. Said that. And number four, I said you must walk by divine guidance. By divine what? If you must prosper, you must walk by the leading of God. The Holy Spirit and the word of God. The principal tools for leading. You don't just do a thing because everybody is doing it. Don't travel to a country when God has not sent you there. Otherwise you beg. 
Make sure wherever you're going to is where God himself sent you. And leading is not once and for all. It's a lifetime journey. You go from one level to another. Many people are not prospering because they are doing what others are doing. So here. And then I went further to say you must be a giver. You must be a what? A giver. You can't prosper if you are not a giver. And then I went further to say you must be a problem solver. You must be a problem. If you must prosper, you must solve problems. If you don't solve any problem, you are not going to prosper. Then in this service, number seven. I'm going to take just two, three of them in this service. What is my access? Number seven. If I want to prosper, then be a person of excellence. Be a person of what? If you want to prosper, you want to have the best, be a person of excellence. In Psalm 8 and verse 9, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. God is an excellent God. Everything about him is excellent. He's an orderly God. In Isaiah chapter 28 verse 29, he said, this also cometh forth from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in walking. So here, at creation, you can see excellence. God did not create fishes first. There was water. There was what? Before fishes came. Before he created the animals, there was bush. Before he created man, there was garden. You can see a torch. Anywhere you see disorder, a torch of excellence is missing. Anywhere, even in a house, where things, you keep looking for your key today, keep looking, you don't have a spirit of excellence. Hey, every time you're looking for something, I don't know where I place my this, I don't know where I place this, so I don't know. It shows that you don't have a torch of excellence. Once in a while you can do it, but if it becomes a lifestyle, every time you're looking for something, you have no touch of excellence. Because you should know where to keep your car key, you should know where to keep your house key, you should know where to keep your documents. Order is a sign of excellence. So here, God had order in Genesis chapter 1. And in Genesis, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 13, he said, Thou shalt be above only. To enjoy supernatural increase, you must refuse to settle for mediocrity. Are you hearing me? So I refuse to settle. Mediocrity brings reproach to God and does not justify your Christianity. Many Christians hide under mediocrity. In the name of church. Let your light so shine before men, God said. Matthew 5 to 16. That they may see your good works, not your good prayer. And glorify your father. Mediocrity does not glorify God. Don't go to class and carry last. It won't glorify God. It doesn't glorify God. You write a paper, they throw it away. It doesn't glorify God. So here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Autograph every of your work assignment with a touch of excellence. Avoid shortcuts. Avoid what? Avoid shortcuts. Excellence will make you pay the price to have extraordinary performance. Men of excellence, they keep improving. They keep what? They keep improving. May you improve. So it's not just giving money that makes you prosper. You must be a, a man with touch of what? Excellence. Excellence makes you relevant in your workplace. It guarantees job security. It guarantees what? In Mark 7.37 and we are beyond measure to say it. He has done all things well. He has done what? That excellence means he has done all things well. Perfect. 
Let excellence be your hallmark in whatever you do. Go extra mile in whatever you do. Go up. Anything you are doing, go extra mile. The Addis and the Everywhere people of God in Matthew 5 41, and whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him to win. Many don't understand that scripture. Look at the pastor translation. And should people in authority take advantage of you, do more than what they demand. Look at Joseph. I'll give you an example. Joseph was asked to interpret what? What was he asked to interpret? He went extra mile to preserve food. Pharaoh said, enter there. Say excellence. Say excellence. What Pharaoh sent for him was to interpret dream. Joseph said, I'm not going to only interpret dream. I'm going to go with the touch of excellence. This is how you will do it to preserve Egypt from decadence. He did, not, he did not say, Pharaoh, make me prime minister. Pharaoh said, take this place. After this day, excellence will place you where you never love it. Amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. What you never bargained for, excellence will place you there. Amen. You will not need to be in a party, you'll be promoted to that place. Amen. Shout a bell amen and say amen to it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, this and hear me well. You will recognize excellence anywhere it is found. Anywhere excellence is found, you will what? Let everybody hate you. They can't press you down with excellence. Excellence never requires replacement. When you have a thought of excellence, when you do a work, they will not do replace. Now listen, all builders and architects, for instance, listen to me, my children. When you have excellence, you will never do a work and say, I don't like it, remove it. When you use inferior materials, you think you're making money, it's mediocrity. It's what? Because somebody will come back and say, hey, remove these things. I don't like them. Change them. That means they're replacing them. And tomorrow the person will not send for you anymore. Excellence will make you use quality materials to attract quality results. Excellence will make you to be focused. To be what? To be focused. Let me say this to you. Any refusal to invest in excellence will bring about a future loss. When people don't believe in excellence and they do things anyhow, tomorrow you start losing. Resolve to be the best in what you do. In what you do. You know what excellence does? Excellence permits the qualified to lead and perform. Anywhere you see people put mediocre to lead is a sign they don't like excellence. When you like excellence, you put the best to lead. In your office, stop doing jobs anyhow. Are you hearing me now? Be passionate for excellence in your workplace. When you work in excellence, people will favor you. Joseph never loved it. He was favored by Pharaoh. <laughs> I, I observe from everything. Excellent people rather go the tough way than go the cheap way. Many of us, when challenges come, we cave to the lower one. Mediocres would rather take a cheap job. Saying, ah, this thing is too difficult. Men of excellence would rather build themselves to face the harder one. But we, in this society, we like this assignment they gave to me is too tough. <clears throat> I remember I take small one. You are settling for mediocrity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Refuse to be a local champion. Refuse to be a what? Go for excellence. Do you want to prosper? Go for excellence. Autograph everything you do with a touch of. You're a laundry man. After washing, if a button is off, fix it. People will come to your laundry shop. If you're a preacher, preach what nobody preaches. What is bringing you here? Excellence. What is bringing you here? Excellence. There are churches, they take. Only testimony, they will take three songs. Praise the Lord! I have 
tres ojos No touch of excellence. You go to church in the morning, you close in the evening. One service. You sew cloth like carpenter. <laughs> Are you a fashion designer? <laughs> Make sure you are a designer. There's difference between a fashion designer and a tailor. They are not the same. They are not what? A tailor is the man who sews. A designer is creative. There's difference between foreman and an architect. Foreman is the supervisor. Architect is creative. That's why they pay the architect more than the foreman. But today everybody knows a fashion designer. Even tailor. It's a fashion designer. Open your mind. It's a fashion designer. <laughs> Go for excellence. Do you want to prosper? In your workplace, stop doing nonsense. Do everything with a touch of excellence. Even food you prepare, let there be a touch of excellence. Don't prepare food. Carry it like that to your husband. Cover the food well. That when the man comes, before even open the food, he's already hungry to eat. He just must see the food here now. <laughs> no touch of excellence. There's so much mediocrity in the body of Christ. So much what? Someone will take an opening prayer. Praise the Lord. You forgot your song. It say, our spirit leads us now. Our spirit leads us. Be ready. Spirit will lead us. For where people left their houses to come to church? Then after they say, nobody to come to our church. How do they come? And you have a restaurant. Listen, all these things are not prayer. You have a restaurant. Flies are everywhere. Flies are flying everywhere. Food you are serving. Make, just like this, just like this. See, nobody, no customer they come. How will customers come? Flies everywhere. How much is fl fleet? Fleet the place than before. So before you finish selling the place, no flight. But you say, no, God is faithful. I am not here. <laughs> Anything you do, let there be a touch of excellence. If you must, process. if you're writing, write well. If you're singing, sing well. If you're clapping, clap well. If you're preaching, preach well. If you're sewing, sew well. Either you do it or don't do it at all. <laughs> Number eight. Want to prosper? After excellence, speak right. What I say? Speak right. Nobody prospers talking anyhow. In Ecclesiastes 5 verse 6, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at their voice and destroy the work of their hands? Say God forbid. Proverbs 12 verse 14, a man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. And the covenant of a man's hand shall be written down to him. While you are a giver, you pay tithe, you give offering, learn how to talk. Learn how to what? The life and death and the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18 verse 20. And then Proverbs 18 21. Proverbs 13 verse 2. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his what? Mouth. Careless talks suspend our account in heaven from losing our blessings. Let me say this to you. Your tongue is the facilitator of our returns on every covenant practice. Stop saying you are poor. You think you're, you're joking. Stop saying, oh boy, guys broke, guys broke. You will be broker than broke. You shall have whatsoever you say. You're a child of God, stop talking carelessly. Stop saying, guys, guys, don't broke. Pocket, don't dry. It will dry.
Be careful what you say with your mouth. You know why? I'll show you something that will baffle you. You all know the parable of the sower? I mean, you know the parable of the sower? From primary school? The parable of the sower Joe was given in Luke 8, 11p. He said, the seed is the word of God. The seed is what? He said, now nah, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So God's word is like to what? Seed. Listen carefully. God's word is, is, word is designed to what? Seed. I said, as long as the earth remained, seed time and harvest shall not cease. So every word you speak is a seed you are sowing. Hmm? So when you get up, you shall have what I say and say, ah, guys, poor, you have sown a seed. Tomorrow you get the harvest of poverty. And then in the midst of poverty, you get up and say, I know things will get better and prosperous. You have sown a seed of prosperity. Tomorrow you reap it. I said, talking of prosperity when there was no time here. And we are seeing it today. Everything we are seeing today was said yesterday. What you are seeing today is what you said yesterday. And what you see tomorrow is what you are saying today. Mind the words that come out of your mouth. Stop saying you are broke. Hmm? Nobody in this country can make it. Are you in the country? You know this country? Bad country. You are amongst the bad people. Do you know what God said in Numbers 14 to the 8th? Read the scripture. It will baffle you. Numbers 14:8. Say unto them, as truly as I live, this God speaking, say the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. When you say you are broke, you'll be broke. Everything you say, many of you are good givers, but poor talkers. After every giving, final boss stop is what you say. I didn't become rich only by giving. If you're in this church, one of this church said that I used to put my hand in my pocket and I said, listen carefully. I'm going to be one of the richest preachers on earth. My, my account was no shishi. I never had an account. The, the account was that there was no account. <laughs> but my mouth was my account. I'll put my hand like this. With one suit or one coat. I say, listen, I'm rich, I'm blessed, I'm prosperous. From my mouth. I said, one of the richest preachers on earth. Am I not one now? I'm globally a rich preacher. Whatever money they put on the internet is not, that's not my, that's not my, my that's not my worth. My worth is anything I want, I call it from heaven. You can't quantify even you, your what? Because your what is far more than what people want you. Is that true? You can say, Father, thank you. Your supplies. Stop looking at your life based on the school classroom teacher. He said, this book of law shall not depart out of your mouth. Thou shalt meditate. You should meditate. Stop talking poverty. Our problem is we pay tithe, we give offering, but we talk poor. We talk what? Even as I'm talking, they say, no, no mind what Papa is talking about. Eh? You know, Papa, he does not go to market. He's just on the altar. So, he doesn't know how these are. All this is smart. He's making plim, 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 plim. He wear white like saying, I be injured. Now I make him mouth to the sharp. The mouth the sharp. Me and they tell you, what nice have you, you know, you know, based on my educational qualification, I will tell you what I know. Country is tough. God said, you say so, you go tough. <laughs> you shall have whatsoever. <laughs> you say, you say, you say country tough, you go tough. If it was not tough before, it would not be tougher, toughest. <laughs> you, you need to need Christians talk. So that's you follow them. You say, all this is we are preaching, you know, hearing them. Some people when they talk, they say, Pastor, leave this thing. We want to talk reality. Okay, I've been talking reality, poverty, devil front. You know what we do? Mouth is so powerful, it shapes your destiny. Everything you say, that's how your, your direction will be going. I've been talking wealth from when I had no dime. You can't change me. You know one funny thing? One day, somebody close to me came to me and said, Pastor, don't say you're rich. If you say so, criminals will think you have too much money. They'll be coming after us. So when they finished talking, he thought he was advising me. As I climb up, I said, listen, I'm one of the richest preachers. <laughs> he couldn't understand where I'm coming from. You know why? 
God said and God saw. If I don't say it, I will not see it. Anything you want to see in your tomorrow, you have to say it today. And God said, let there be light and there. Listen, listen. When you read the Bible, meditate. Why didn't God say, and there came light? Why did he use words? Listen. Listen, read the Bible. God said, let there be light. Why did God not use English and there was light? He would have said, let there be light and there came light. With me, light was existing. God called it forth. The light that God called forth was already in existence. I was he that was dead and I'm alive. Your future is God's past tense. Your prosperity is been settled. Don't, don't talk. God said, look, this thing is settled. Just say it out. All you do is, after you pay tithe, give offering, come up. Whether people like it or not, say, listen, we can't fail. My family will be very rich. We are going to be one of the most prosperous people on earth. That is how to talk as a child. Even if they don't like it, say it. I will talk. Look, if you are in this job before, you, you, you will not be surprised. I used to talk, oh, I'm even polished now. With one shoe, the shoe said was tired. I'll say like this, I'll say, listen, and I'll make sure people see the shoe side when I, when I become... <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I'm talking and they say, ah, God don't bless me, my day sharp. That time, with one suit, one black, I can tell you the picture of the black coat. I said, Listen, I'm one of the richest preachers. She, she physically was not there. I said, I'm rich. And I know I'm rich because I was doing what it takes to be rich. So why would I be saying I'm poor? So I'm rich. I'm one of the richest preachers on earth. My account was not up to one million. And I said, I'm so rich that I'm so blessed of God. Listen, listen, now. you will hear my name globally. I was saying it long. You still like this? Hmm. You where they teach for Bam? How can somebody teaching the Bam be saying it's rich? I'm a popular teacher. Papa, you don't understand. Bam, Bam, Bam. How can somebody Bam say it's rich? <laughs> Pastor, talk your own. No? But I'm sure you change the way you talk. Lift your hands and say, Father, all the evil words. I spoke in the past that stood against my destiny. Today, I agree with God's son that you called that by the blood of Jesus, I wiped them off. That they will not stand against my destiny. They will not stop me from prospering. Now keep that hand up. I stand in my office. Whatever your mouth has spoken that has kept your destiny where it is, I clear with the blood of Jesus. Every negative word you spoke that stood against you in the past with all the poverty works, hardship words that made you to be struggling in life, I cancel them with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Now nature abhors back himself with me from today. from today. Things will go well. Will I, will prosper. I will prosper. I will succeed. I will Get up and be talking. In the name of I will prosper. I will, I will succeed. I am blessed. Go ahead and speak over your life. Blessed be God. In Jesus' mighty name. Please hear this. In the kingdom of God, you become what you believe and declare. You become what you what? Young girl, don't because of situations say any man will come and go marry. No, 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 no. Not every man will come. Tell the kind of man you want. Young boy, stop saying any girl, the way then any girl where I see I go marry. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Talk the kind of person you want. In this kingdom, whatever you believe, it is when you declare it, you become it. Are you getting me now? Don't because of circumstances, why you do things you talk. Do you know when you say, I will give you a mark, which advance you cannot get, say, no what? Resist. If you look to the 115, when things are going contrary, speak the way you want. Are you getting me? Words are powerful. They create your future. Your prosperity ends with your mouth. After sowing all the seeds, your mouth is the final bust stop. Some of you, you have given, you have paid tight, you have given offering, but this, your mouth is your problem. Bobo, I'm telling you, somehow, somehow, 
tough. 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 Nothing is working. This country, nothing is working. Because he said, nothing is working. And he want me to walk out this way. So you go to the office, nothing is working. You go for contract, nothing is working. He said, the demons in our family. God says, your mouth that you did. <laughs> now that you've counseled them, things will work for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to praise God for two minutes. Then number nine, keep praising. Keep what? While you're standing, keep praising. Keep praising. Stop mumbling and complaining. Stop mumbling and complaining. Complaining complicates issues. If you want to prosper, let the people praise the yoga, let all the people praise. Then the air shall yield what? And God, even our God, shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Psalm 67, 5 to 7. You know me, 28, 47 to 48. When you begin to murmur, God, the works of your hands will be destroyed. Be careful. Do you know Joel chapter 1, verse 12? He said, Everything is dried up because joy has departed from the children of men. Many of you, you know joy. Every time you will close the door. Oh God, are you still in heaven? Where, where, where will he be now? The way you complain, that's why things are complicated. But all I've said in all the services, just remember, God will never depend on any of us to accomplish his purpose. We depend on him. For his purpose to be fulfilled. He said. Everything. Psalm 50 verse 12. Everything you and I are looking for. Where will it come from? He said. If I were hungry. I will not tell thee. For the world is mine. And the fullness thereof. So if we say give. God is not hungry. There's nothing you give to God. That he didn't give to you in the first place. A man can receive nothing. Except to be given from heaven. So be committed to God and his affairs. And will exempt in the midst of hardship. Are you ready to praise him? For the next three, four minutes, four minutes maximum. Four. Four minutes you are going to praise God and say, Lord, as I praise you, let every seed I have sown, the harvest come speedily. Every church, four minutes you are praise God and say, Lord, I have sown seed as I praise you. Let my praise water the seed I have sown for the harvest to come. In Jesus' name. Expect your own miracle as we praise God now.
shout hallelujah. You open your mouth and say, Lord, by this praise, all seeds have sown. Let my praise bring forth the harvest.